I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes and untold TV stories that probably you would not have known from the people who lived them. First, don't forget, hit the button and subscribe. Today, Sherwood Schwartz and I began talking about the Brady Bunch, the story of two families coming together. Sherwood Schwartz talks about his pitch to the network and how afraid they were of the original concept, and why he turned down CBS and NBC and ABC to do the show properly the way he wanted the invention of the opening theme, and the checkerboard. Plus, I asked him, how do you cast six kids? You'll learn how many kids were up for the part and the secret of the alternate universe, Brady Kids. So uh, I had this idea, and I went to CBS. I, I had done a lot of shows at CBS, and it was kind of my, my place to go to begin with. So I went there, and I said, I have this idea about, about these two families joined together which nobody had ever done before. And that's always dangerous, because they have no precedent. They can't say, well, it was a great comic book, so it'll be a great show. It was a great movie, so it'll be a great show. It was a great book, so it'll be a great show. But when you come in with a new idea, they have nothing to lean on, and they're afraid to fall, or fail, or both. And so, uh, I went to CBS and I told them this idea, and they say, we love it, that's a great idea. Now bring us, instead of a pilot film, which I had written, instead of the pilot, bring us a seventh episode, or the fifth episode, or some other episode. I said, why? I said, it's important to know how these people met, and they got married, and they're two separate families, that's what I want to do as a pilot. And they said, no, no, we, like, we don't like to do pilot pilots. We like to do a slice of the show in future terms. I said, no, I said, I can't do it with this show. This show has to be the way it is. So I went to NBC where I have friends. In those years I had friends. I don't know if, well, I don't know who's around now, but uh, in those years I had friends. And so... I went there and I talked to them about it. And they said, we love the idea, but you have to change the ending. I said, why do I have to change the ending? I don't know if you're familiar with the pilot, but in the, in the, in the pilot that I had written, uh, this couple who had met and fallen in love and they were gonna get married, go on their honeymoon and they're uneasy on their honeymoon because they're worried about their kids. And so they, the solution was, and it last, the end, the last five minutes of the show was them going back and getting their kids and coming back to this honeymoon hotel. And NBC said no couple alive would go back and get their kids for their honeymoon. I said, well, I think Mr. and Mrs. Brady are going to do exactly that. And I said, I think that'll make the audience love them even more when they realize the, 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 the strength of a family and their, their reluctance to give up their children, even for a honeymoon. No, that's, no nobody's going to believe it. I said, I believe it. And so I went to ABC, where I had not done too much before, but they welcomed me anyway. And I told them this idea. And they said, we love it. We love it. All, all three networks loved it. Always with a reservation. ABC said, we like it just the way it is, but we are now doing, this was the beginning of two-hour shows, original two-hour shows in that year, 1969, I think it was. Uh, I forget who it was. Anyway, he had just invented the two-hour show, uh, for uh, original shows for, for TV. So they said, just take this pilot and make it longer. Well, it's not like goods that you can stretch. Uh, I said, I can't make it longer. I said, what I can do is I can reserve this 30 minutes for the last half hour. And I said, I can build a, an hour up to this, like a prequel, which they call them now, but I can build a prequel where they meet, where they have uh, uh, problems with courtship, and then eventually, this half hour, which you love and which I think is a good half hour, that would be the end of the hour and a half, because that's what they were, hour and a half, 
the two hour shows in those years were hour and a half shows. And uh, they said, no, you don't understand. We love the show just the way you wrote it. Just make it longer. I said, you can't make it longer without making it duller. And they said, well, we'll make a deal with you right now. You do it the way we want it. Make it longer and we'll guarantee you 13 weeks on the air. I said, no, 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 you can't do that because it won't last 13 weeks. You can't do that with this show. You can't do that. And so we failed to come to terms with any of the three networks. And then about two years later, three years later, uh, Yours, Mine, and Ours came out as a movie, Paramount movie. And that was substantially what I had said to ABC that I wanted to do, where this couple with man had, had, had six kids, I forget how many they each had, but they met and they had problems of courtship and problems with their kids. And then the end of the show, they got married. It's exactly what I had discussed. Well, now I had, that, sh that movie became my pilot film. I went back to Paramount. I said, this is what I've been talking about because Paramount and ABC were together at that time for some reason. And so they said, well, okay, now we see it can be done. So, so I did it my way. Um, and that first pilot, was, was there any, was there any um, issues with the fact of Mike and, and Carol being divorcees? Did the network have any issues about that? When, when I did uh, The Brady Bunch, we never had a discussion about whether they were married before and not married before. Uh, the only implication, not more than an implication actually, was the fact that, that uh, Mr. Brady's uh, past wife had died. It was never explained why Mrs. Well, the lady who became Mrs. Brady, uh, whatever happened with her husband, nobody, nobody questioned that. But in the movie, it turned out that he was on Gilligan's Island, apparently. <laughs> sort of, yes. <laughs> I pay attention. Um, I understand you have an interesting method for casting children. Casting children, of which there were six on the Brady Bunch, presents several problems. Uh, especially if you want to, if you want to appeal to an audience in terms of identification, which is, by the way, why I invented the, 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 uh, the checkerboard design for the kids, because I realized that with that many characters, that's an unusual number of characters in a situation comedy, and you had to have close-ups in order to remember people from one week to another which is vital if you're on a TV. It's not a big screen like in a theater. So I invented this checkerboard design for introducing the characters. Uh, and, and, but to get to the actual casting of these characters, because six of them were kids, how do you get six kids? How do you cast it? First of all, I believe, even though it doesn't turn out to be true, uh, if you see a blonde lady and she has blonde girls, you can accept it easier than if she's a blonde and has three dark-haired girls, or two or one, or whatever combination. Same with the boys. So I wanted to have the, the men, the, I was casting men and women for the roles of the parents, obviously. And so uh, I didn't know whether the man was gonna be dark-haired or the lady was gonna be dark-haired, <clears throat> excuse me, and I had to cast 12 kids. So there are six other kids in the world. <laughs> there are three dark haired girls who were grown up who could have become. Uh, the, alternate, the alternate universe version of the Brady Bunch. That's right. That, that's right. That's, there is a, a universe somewhere <laughs> where there are three dark haired girls and three blonde boys <laughs> who are Brady's. But uh, not in this universe because that was the one I was dealing with. You know, you can only deal with one universe at a time. So I was casting these kids, and 
I was once asked, I think by TV Guide, in an interview, how many kids did I see? And it turned out to be 264 kids. I didn't keep track of them all. My secretary had notes on all these kids. On the next Pop Goes the Culture, Brady Bunch creator Sherwood Schwartz tells us about casting the Brady kids, his secret method of finding the right ones, the great story about casting Susan Olsen as Cindy, plus why he considers Gilligan's Island to be a serious show. Uh-huh. We'll also discuss the short-lived reality show version of Gilligan's Island and the difference, as he sees it, and shooting ratios on scripted versus unscripted shows. And I finally asked him the long-awaited secret. Why did the Mel Brady's hair get curly in the last season after Hawaii? Till then, why not help us out by becoming a Patreon subscriber? For just a buck a month, you'll get name-checked on at least one Pop Goes the Culture episode. It's a great way to make people think you're famous and keep us on the air. For now, who was your favorite Brady and why? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you next time.